Hey everybody, Sean here and I hope you're doing well. The baptism of fire is what we're looking at today, so let's jump right in. Before we begin, please understand that the term baptism of fire is not in the Bible. The first view of what this baptism means is a purification of believers. It's God's Holy Spirit purging out our impurities. And we'll look at clips of this in a moment. But the Bible doesn't teach this, so why are people teaching this today? A verse people use to support this is Romans 5, 3-5 that reads, We rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 also talks about trials by fire, but this is far different than those so-called preachers imparting the Holy Spirit on you and telling you that you are being cleansed. And then you see the person fall to the ground twitching and in pain. This is not taught or seen anywhere in the Bible, and anyone doing or teaching this is teaching from their own false narrative and should be avoided. And if you are falling down in pain after they touch you, there's a good chance that they have imparted an unclean spirit to you and that you aren't actually saved and indwelt with the Holy Spirit. The second understanding is that this is the receiving of spiritual gifts like when they spoke on tongues on the day of Pentecost. But once again, Scripture doesn't teach this as a receiving of gifts. It was tongues that appeared as fire. They weren't actually fire. And the only gift shown was speaking in tongues. And nobody fell to the ground contorting their bodies or screaming in agony as we see today. Once again, this is not biblical, and people calling down fire from heaven that makes people convulse in pain and speak in so-called tongues is not teaching the Bible, but a perverted twisting of Scripture. So let's take a look at a video from the past that explains this so-called baptism of fire in context. Many people like Mark Hemans here falsely teach that the promise from Jesus is that we can receive the gift of the Spirit in glory, power, and fire. He's also saying that just by watching, we can receive the baptism of fire. I feel heat all over here, Pastor. Power of God's on you. Lord, baptize her in the Holy Spirit and with fire. This, what you're watching now, is what John the Baptist prophesied that Jesus would do. And he's still doing it today, baptizing people in the Holy Spirit and with fire, changing people's lives. Not only does he kick out the evil spirits of depression, but he gives you a new life, joy, peace, abundant, eternal life. Thank you, Lord. All the promises of God are yours in Christ Jesus. <laughs> It's fire in the house today. Does that look like the joy and peace he said they'd received? Not likely. We did a video on one of these baptisms called Baptized with Fire, That Poor Man, and it's been age restricted to 18 plus because it's so devastating to watch. It literally looks like a demon possession. You can watch that in the False Teachings in the Church playlist if you like and comment if you think this is the work of the Holy Spirit. But Mark Heeman isn't the only one that teaches this. Almost everyone in the New Apostolic and Hyper Charismatic movement believe this as well. So let's look at what the Bible says the baptism of fire is. We read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but the baptism of fire is only mentioned in Matthew and Luke. When we look at this in Matthew, it's important to look at the context. He's with a group of people doing baptisms, and the Pharisees and Sadducees approach him. So there's a crowd of believers and unbelievers. He starts off calling them a brood of vipers and talks about bearing fruit in keeping with repentance and that trees, symbolizing people that do not produce good fruit, are thrown into the lake of fire. He goes on to explain that Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then he clarifies this. With his winnowing fork in hand, he will clear his threshing floor. A winnowing fork is like a pitchfork and is used to toss the wheat into the air and the wind would blow away the chaff and allow the edible grains to fall to the floor. 
Jesus separates the wheat, that is believers with the Holy Spirit in them, into the barn, and the chaff, which is non-believers, go into the unquenchable fire, which is the lake of fire. So the baptism of fire is not for Christians, yet this false teaching is embraced by so many. In Acts 1 it says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised. What's that gift? John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Fire is not mentioned as a gift from God to believers. We can also look at Acts 11. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as he did upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Once again, there's no mention of fire. The Holy Spirit is for believers and fire refers to the lake of fire. It's unfortunate because so many people in this movement are brainwashed into believing that this baptism of fire is a good thing and for Christians, but it takes only a moment to read this in context and see it isn't true. And as for the day of Pentecost when there were tongues as of fire that fell on them, that was a one-time event and it mentions nothing about a baptism of fire. This is a man-made teaching and incorrect as we've seen in scripture. So please, Understand that anybody teaching this is in big time error and is doing it willfully because it only takes but a moment to understand the truth of those verses. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.